Philip Stoughton for EMS Now. I'm here at Apex 2013 in San Diego, California. I'm joined by Jeff Timms from ASM Assembly Systems. Jeff, great to see you again. You too, Phil. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Um, when ASM acquired Seaplace, they made no secret of their desire to be number one. Uh, obviously, the Americas is one of the key markets for you guys. How's market share been doing here over the last 12, 18 months? We've had a very strong 2012. In fact, uh, uh, the reality is uh, we doubled our market share in the Americas in the last 12 months. Okay. And, and uh, it's, uh, it's been very uh, gratifying to see uh, the, 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 the product portfolio come together, the team come together, mm. and the, uh, our ability to execute uh, yeah. uh, just, just driving uh, business in every corner of, yeah. of North and South America. Yeah. And it is all of those things, isn't it? It's not just about, it's not just what you're talking about and, and the people who are talking, it's the product that's behind it and the portfolio. And people, exactly. people seem to be getting that solution over a machine kind of issue at the moment. Indeed, and, and you know, uh, we, have, we have a different message uh, today than we've had in the past. The, the message today is more about having a piece of hardware that doesn't have any real physical constraints mm. that can play mm -hmm. extremely well with world-class software. Yeah. And if, if you take away the complexity of the hardware, all of a sudden, you can write software that can go well beyond what a yeah. traditional piece of software yeah. can do because the complexity of the code yeah. then streamlines. Yeah, so. yeah, and I think that, that you know I've noticed in um, in the language uh, within the industry that's changed as well. In that instead of talking about you know chips per hour and all, we, we we used to talk a lot about what the machine can do. Um, we now talk about what the requirement is much more and, and what people need and that. You know, what are the issues with EMS guys? You know, the flexibility and all those things. Yes, absolutely. In, in, in fact, if you if you look at the messaging we have on, on the booth here at Apex this year, uh, the it, of course the hardware it, nothing works without world class hardware. Mm -hmm. But the messaging is all around our ability to manage MPIs, yeah. uh, our ability to uh, manage product changeovers, mm -hmm. or better yet, eliminate product changeovers. Uh, and our ability to uh, manage the planning cycles yeah. of, of introducing new products yeah. to your manufacturing yeah. floor. Yeah, and, and taking that machine and making sure it's running and absolutely, absolutely. placing components every possible moment because exactly. that's where they get their, they get their return on investment. And it's not just about North America. You've had a recent um, celebration, a grand opening down in South America. Yes, we spent we spent uh, a good share of 2012 rebuilding and, and establishing a world class infrastructure throughout mm. Brazil. So we have uh, two two uh, uh, centers of competency in Brazil, one in in the uh, Sao Paulo region, and also uh, a brand new uh, world class facility in Manaus, okay. up on the Amazon. So uh, the grand opening for this facility with training center, uh, demo equipment, uh, full spare parts, uh -huh. service and sales uh, uh, came online in December. Okay, okay. And what kind of response are you getting down there? What's Tremendous. Yeah. I mean, the fact is, if you don't have the infrastructure to support your customer, you can't sell to them. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah, so having it right on their doorstep. Absolutely. And, and what's that market looking like? I mean, it's, it, it's looked to me like a market that's that's kind of ready to go for a while. I, I think it is. I mean, the, the way the way that that market is structured, it, it it's designed uh, to support itself, mm. right? Yeah. Right. So so uh, there's a good deal of uh, of, of in-country manufacturing. Yeah. And and unlike other uh, developing economies, uh, the Brazilian economy. Uh, does have a very very strong entrepreneurial base, mm. so so we have a real mixture between the, the large multinationals and yeah. and the smaller yeah. uh, uh, startup yeah. uh, type organizations. Yeah, and it's in country for for country um, yes. manufacturing, isn't it? The, we all know about the um, the kind of tariffs there on electronic products and the desire to manu yes. manufacture locally. What about the rest of South America? What's going on in Argentina, for example? Uh, a little activity in Argentina uh, seems to be uh, uh, fairly stable. Um, nothing, nothing really going gangbusters. Uh, believe it or not, we're starting to see uh, some activity around Costa Rica. Uh huh. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, really surprisingly, uh, a lot of activity all of a sudden in Venezuela. See, I've heard some little rumors about Venezuela. What's going? What, what kind of manufacturing is it? Uh, uh, actually, there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, notebook computer manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, tablet manufacturing right. and mobile phone manufacturing. Okay, so the pretty yes. leading edge in terms of placement requirement. In, those kinds. indeed, and an area that you're particularly known for, I guess. Yes. Those um, exactly those, those those consumer products. 
the the other element I wanted to touch on, again relating back to the uh, ASM uh, um, acquisition, was they use this term "together number one," mm -hmm. and I guess that's kind of part of the whole global roadmap. Yes. What do they mean by that, and, and how's how's progress? Okay, um, I would I, I have to say that, that that this is a tremendous relationship between the original ASM uh, uh, company uh, and the acquisition of the Seaplace yeah. uh, uh, company. The the uh, uh, the depth of resources, uh, the, the the thought process of taking products and our portfolio to market, and the ability to manage the ever decreasing cycles of expansion and contraction, mm. which we're we're going to see more and more. Yeah. Uh, expansion cycles will be sharper, faster, and shorter. Yeah. Contraction cycles will be sharper, yeah. faster, and shorter. Yeah. Uh, so it's the company that can manage through those cycles without yeah. cutting their core resources, yeah. without without having to compromise their ability to yeah. execute, that's going to be the long-term winner. Yeah, and it's interesting, um, if you look back to the to the acquisition, obviously all, there was all the all, all the talk about you know maintaining what, what was there in terms of R&D in Munich, and, and I guess from a journalistic point of view, much of the media was a little bit skeptical, um, but it does really seem to be that they've they've walked that walk. It Absolutely. wasn't just talk, and you know that's really, really pleasing to see. And, and you know, it's given us a uh, 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 access to uh, Asian supply chains mm. that that is unsurpassed. Yeah, and yeah. and with very high quality, very uh, 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 very good pricing structure. Yeah. It's really helped us to become even yeah. more competitive in yeah. many areas. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we're in a position where I think there's some definitely going to see some M and A activity this year. There's some companies that are are, are going to be replaced in the business, and, and you kind of hope for them that they're as lucky as you were to get the right partner. Uh, we, we feel uh, very, very fortunate that yeah. we had such a, a good parent company yeah, acquire yeah. us. Absolutely, Jeff. Thanks for stopping by. Thank I you, hope Phil. you enjoy the rest of the show. What little there is left, and um, we'll speak Th again soon. Thank you very much.